I always request my parents, first know your child, mm -hmm. your strengths, his strengths. And I always tell my teachers to know your students first. Because everyone is individual. And everyone has got his or her own strengths. So we have to realize that. Actually, because of pressure on SLC candidates, some candidates cannot bear the pressures, so they come in society. Education, our Eastern philosophy, it's itself progressive efforts. I can give a lot of examples, if time permits. Mm -hmm. I don't think that this interview goes a lot, can go for a long time. Mm -hmm. Actually, Western philosophy seems to be guided by Eastern philosophy. This progressive approach is clearly mentioned in the Eastern philosophy. If you want to, uh, if you want to go through the Eastern philosophy, you can find it. But we Eastern philosophy is just limited to worshiping. But Westerners implemented the word Eastern philosophy in real life situations. Mm -hmm. Good morning, dear ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Brabim Basnet. This is Nagarik Post Online Television. Today we are with Mr. Sampurna Devapati. He is principal of Macha Puchari School, Lalitpur. Today we are going to discuss on about education. Mr. Sampurna Devapati, you are hearty welcome in our program. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Namaskar. More than two decades, you are engaged in Nepalese education. What are the challenges of Nepalese education in your point of view? First of all, thank you for the question. Talking about challenges in the field of Nepalese education, since education itself is a dynamic process, we need to adapt learning to the demands of the society, aspirations of the parents, and talking more about challenges. The demands of the 21st century are on the increase these days. The traditional teaching methods we employ in the classroom are not good enough to bring about potentials latent in children, students. And the children who are starting now will have to compete with the Chinese, with the Westerners, Americans in the days to come. And education in Nepal is still lagging under traditional Nepal. It's very unfortunate to say that we are living in a democratic country, but we do not give democracy to the students in the classroom. So challenges in the field of education is that we, as a teachers, need to realize the potentials and interests of the children. Very good question. We at Massachusetts School employ progressive efforts. Uh, that means student-centered learning. In our school, we completely discourage lecture method. What is the modern appearance of education? especially in Matsapustali school? Okay, very good question. Talking about approach at Matsapustali school, we've been employing progressive approach to education for the last one year at Matsapustali school. It means that we don't believe learners can learn in a traditional class. Rather, we believe that learners must construct knowledge on their own with just the guidance of the teachers. And learning, in my opinion, must be connected with real life situations. So that classroom boundaries must be expanded. So we often take the students outside so that they can absorb the community outside and they can learn a lot from the observation as well. Tell me 
about uh, daily life education. Daily life education. Daily life education. Practical education. Actually, education in Nepal is hovering between two aspects. Mm -hmm. Remembering and understanding. Mm -hmm. That means students are supposed to memorize certain concepts and teachers are supposed to explain certain concepts. But actually, education to get completion up to go through three, six different processes. First, definitely comes remembering, then comes understanding, then comes applying, then comes analyzing, evaluating and creating. It takes decades for Nepal to reach creating. Actually, a learner having completed a certain getting uh, concept has to create a new thing. In the case of Nepal, Nepalese education, even we have not been able to help the students to apply whatever they have learned in a classroom. So at Masakusri, we make sure that having learned a certain concept, students must be able to apply those concepts in their daily life. Let me give you a simple example. If a student is supposed to learn measurement in mathematics. Generally, a mathematics teacher gives a concept of a measurement and writes something on the board and students are supposed to solve some exercises given a textbook. But here at Mathsapusri, we connect measurement to the real life situations. Like when students are storing measurement in the classroom, they are seen moving around the school, holding scale, and they are found to be measuring the ground, the classrooms, their uh, bedrooms, their study rooms. That's how we connect learning to their daily life activities. And this is what we've been doing at Mass School. Deva Party, sir. Deva Party, sir. Most of the schools, uh, teachers and principal are claiming nowadays we are providing daily life education. We are providing practical education. Do you believe this statement? I don't talk about all private schools. I can talk about my school only. Mm -hmm. So whereas my school is concerned, yes, we are trying to provide practical education to students. And we must define what practical education is. All the schools claim that they are providing practical education to, to students, as you said earlier. But it must be manifested in quantitative forms. As I said earlier, we provide democracy to the students in a classroom. Generally, teachers do not give an opportunity to the students to even raise questions. They are supposed to uh, stick to the chairs, fold it with their hands folded. But here in our classroom, teachers do not keep a lecture for a long time. Actually, students are involved in a group and they are given a problem and in a group or on an individual level, students are required to find a solution to those problems themselves. And that's how they can develop their life skills as well. In a group, if they are allowed to work in a group, then their self-confidence, their problem-solving skills and empathy and sympathy are developed in the students themselves. So this is, this is what we call practical education. And as I told you earlier, whatever, whatever they have learned in a classroom must be implemented or must be connected with their real life situations. And that's what practical education is, in my opinion. It means uh, for uh, practical education, we should minimize lecture method. For practical education, uh, we should give uh, very much opportunity for students uh, doing some things? Definitely, definitely. Yes. This is uh, real life education? Yes. Most of the students are pass in their examination, but most of the students are fail in their life. This is present reality. This is vital truth. 
Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Am I right? That's why we often counsel our parents, mm -hmm. okay, if your children have potentials to score A plus on the paper sheet, that's what you can help your child to score A plus. But we must make sure that they must gain A plus in their life as well. So let me tell you on a research finding. 70% people who are successful in the world are either dropouts or average students in school life. So it shows that students who have scored A plus on the sheet of paper are not likely to be successful in their life as well. So we need to focus on their life skills. So education means it helps mm -hmm. individuals to, to live life with ease and comfort, mm -hmm. bringing positive changes in the society. That is what education is. In the name of providing quality education, practical education, nowadays uh, some schools and colleges are applying the education that is best or that are based on Western philosophy. What is your concern? about this? Very good question and interesting one. It seems that our mind, our perception is whatever the West has discovered is suitable mm -hmm. in all aspects of life. Mm -hmm. In the case of education, our Eastern philosophy is itself progressive. I can give a lot of examples, if time permits, mm -hmm. but I don't think that this interview goes a lot, can go for a long time. Mm -hmm. Actually, Western philosophy seems to be guided by Eastern philosophy. Mm -hmm. This progressive approach is clearly mentioned in Eastern philosophy. If you want to, uh, if you want to go through the Eastern philosophy, you can find it. But we, Eastern philosophy is just limited to worshipping. But Westerners implemented the Western philosophy in real life situations. Mm -hmm. Actually, progressive approach or uh, student centered learning is already mentioned in Eastern philosophy itself. But we believe that this progressive approach, student centered learning, is guided by Eastern philosophy. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Actually, the Eastern philosophy is influenced by the Eastern philosophy. Sorry, the Western philosophy is highly influenced by Eastern philosophy. In Machapuchari school, we are applying Western philosophy, Eastern philosophy or mixed philosophy? No, it's neither Western nor the Eastern. Our philosophy is suitable for on this land. It should be citizen oriented? Yeah. Soil oriented? Yeah, soil oriented. It is Eastern philosophy. The progressive approach seems to be Western philosophy. It's, it, it seems that it's a product of the Western philosophy. I told you earlier, it is mentioned in the Eastern philosophy itself. So we're trying to merge. Like, students must have the Western heart. In terms of critical thinkers, creative thinkers. Yes. But in terms of culture, our Eastern philosophy is stronger than the Western philosophy. Even Westerners are trying to learn from the Eastern culture. And we are trying to learn from the Western culture. So we cannot demarcate that Eastern philosophy, this is Eastern philosophy, and this is Western philosophy. There are certain elements which are, uh, which are suitable for Nepalese culture. So if it is better for the Nepalese students, then why not, why not uh, borrow from Western culture as well? Mm -hmm. But we should never forget that our Eastern culture is not less suitable than the Western culture itself. It is said that in the name of uh, providing quality education, better education, we are loading our children's bags with full of books like this. Right? Very practical question. I don't believe that students should be made to carry a lot of books, more books than their than their body weight. And the concept of textbook is outdated. Mm -hmm. 
actually the textbooks the concept of textbook uh, was in existence mm -hmm. 40 50 years ago when we had nothing no internet nothing was there but these days this is an age where knowledge is scattered the knowledge is on the tip of your finger and one textbook is not good enough to bring about holistic development in an individual. This is my opinion. Mm -hmm. So if a student is given a chance to explore, it could be information coming to technology, mm -hmm. or reference books, or magazines. So this, this helps an individual to explore themselves. So I don't believe that uh, students should be carrying bulk of textbooks to the school because one textbook is not adequate to bring about an all-round development in an individual. So we do not, uh, in our school we don't ask the students or we don't uh, want students to bring a lot of textbooks and actually we don't even use the textbooks here. We use the word reference books. So after class 3 our students are not supposed to get any books. Or we don't even prescribe any textbooks to the students. Mm -hmm. And even without textbooks, we can we are in part quality education for students. Mm -hmm. In the context of Nepal, our students have to stay seven hours, eight hours, nine hours, twelve hours, twelve oh. hours in the schools. How? they can be stress-free by staying 12 hours at the schools. I don't believe that students have to stay for a longer time at the school. They can... A school is not only a place where students can learn everything. Home is the first school for any child. Home is the first place where a child learns the basics of education. So, in progressive approach, we seek strong parental involvement in child's learning. So mm -hmm. we don't uh, we don't make the students stay at a school for a long time, from nine to four, so that they can learn from their parents at home. They can share the experiences with the parents, and they can learn they can learn uh, socializing skills at home. So ours are different in school. We don't, we don't pressurize the students. Even class 10 students are not pressurized. Mm. But they are doing pretty well. So this, is, this is determined by how you teach in a classroom. Mm -hmm. That matters a lot. So, mm -hmm. okay. In the name of uh, uh, giving in the name of giving quality education. Uh, we should not pressure our students. We By mean, means of it pressure, is uh, it kills creativity. Yes, it is not necessary at all. Under Those pressurizing things, yeah. environment, sorry mm -hmm. to interrupt you, yeah. under, a, under a pressurized environment, students' creativity, their potentials get hit, as you say. Why our students' life it is uh, 1 to 20, 1 to 19 is very fertile age. Why? It's a very good question. Because it is the age where they can enhance their personality. It is called a formative year. So it is, uh, um, psychologically speaking, within six years, a child has formed 80% of his or her personality at the age of 6. Within 6 years? Within 6 years. At the age of 6? Yes, at the age of 6. 80% mm -hmm. of his or her personality is formed. So this is a very crucial age. Mm -hmm. So we have to handle the children of this age very seriously and very wisely. Mm -hmm. among schools because we want our children according to our wishes but every child is born with certain potentials and we don't realize those potentials and we force the students 
to fulfill our wishes. Mm -hmm. For example, if Sachin Tendulkar was forced to become an engineer mm -hmm. by his parents, we would have missed a great international cricketer. Mm -hmm. Because Sachin Tendulkar was born to be a cricketer, mm -hmm. not to be an engineer. So, I always request my parents, first know your child, mm -hmm. your strengths, these strengths. And I always tell my teachers to know your students first. Because everyone is individual. And everyone has got his or her own strengths. So we have to realize that. Actually, because of pressure on SS candidates, some candidates cannot bear the pressures, so they come to society. Would you give some honest uh, suggestion to our students? Yes. My suggestion to all the students is know your potentials and do accordingly. And try to become what strengths you have. First know yourself first. And try to become what you want to be. And if you know your potentials and if you know your strengths, then you can become not only a successful person, you can become a good person as well. So, may cultivate a story habit at a very young age. And I always tell my students, always have a love affair with books. Mm -hmm. You'll never end up in tragedy. Mm -hmm. That's my mantra to all my students. Mr. Sampurna Devapati, sir, principal of uh, Masakusari School. Is it necessary to have a huge building, huge infrastructure, library, uh, luxury classroom for providing quality education? To a large extent, yes. Yeah. Because ambience matters. Learning environment matters. Mm -hmm. And tell me about the infrastructure of uh, Masakusari schools. Thank you. Uh, Master Puchri School has a world-class infrastructure, as you can see. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, uh, in fact, the, the infrastructure at Master Puchri is seismic safe zone. It is an earthquake resistant building, mm -hmm. so that students can learn in a very safe environment. And even parents, having sent their children to school, feel safe at home. Mm -hmm. And we have a very spacious playground for the students. And a good school must have at least three criteria fulfilled, like a spacious playground, a good library, and a lab, then safe and hygienic canteen. And that's what we uh, proudly say that we possess everything. But most of the Private schools are in congested environment, especially in Nepal. What do you say about this problem and situation? Well, I'm not against it. Actually, private schools are imparting, imparting quality education to Nepal children. And most of the private schools have prevented parents from going to India. That means it's a waste of money. Money can be drained to India. So, because of the existence of private schools in Nepal, quality of education has been enhanced, raised, and they are running on their own financial, own, own, own property, without the support of God. So I salute to all the private schools. Okay, no matter if they have a small building or they don't have a spacious playground, at least they are providing quality education, which the community schools are not able to do. Mm -hmm. It means it's okay. We are giving something. Yeah. Congested environment also. We should uh, appreciate. We should appreciate, yes. We should appreciate what they are doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, what is the future of our Nepalese student? <laughs> by having this, uh, this kind of education, what will be the future? 
I can see a very good future on them students. Most of the students starting abroad are able to compete at an international level. And that's because of the quality being provided by the private schools. We should be optimistic. Definitely. We must be optimistic. Our children's, our students' life is very bright. Yeah, definitely. By having this kind of education. Yeah. Of course, there is a rift between schools. Mm -hmm. There's a huge gulf between community schools and private schools. Between private. Uh, preparing the students to go abroad. We are preparing the students to go abroad. Only for going abroad. Well, this is not because of educational policy. It's because of instability in government. Government policy. Yes. Because of. Yeah. Government instability. No job. The government has not been able to come up with some uh, job policies for Nepalese students. No job. Uh, Nepalese no students. Yeah. Nepalese students having invested a lot of money for the education have to go abroad, and they are compelled to go abroad. They are not willingly going going abroad. I think. Our oh, students are capable. Yes. Uh, at abroad, but they yeah. are not capable yes. in Nepal. Because. Because in foreign countries they get good opportunities. In Nepal, they don't. Okay, finally, what is your uh, advice, suggestion to our government, our teachers, students, like this? Okay, first of all, some elements in Nepal are blaming private schools for charging high fee for the stories. But I want to suggest the government or those elements who criticize private schools. In fact, it is the private schools which have been able to uphold the prestige of education in Nepal. Can we imagine Nepal without private education, uh, private schools, mm -hmm. our education might go back to, again into darkness, bad ways, if we do not have private schools in Nepal. But having said that, I don't mean to say that community schools are not doing better. There are a few community schools which we can count on the fingers are doing better. But we want community schools should also enhance their quality. Mm -hmm. But without criticizing or without discouraging the existence of private schools. I'd like to ask one more question to you. Some guardians are blaming that private schools are charging much to the parents like this. I don't buy this question. I don't agree with these questions. Actually, parents must be given a right to choose the schools, right to choose the education they want for the children. And no private schools, I believe, force any parents to get their children admitted. Mm. Visit the school willingly. Because we have choices. Yes, parents must be given choices. Mm. No, parents, parents, no private schools compel the parents to come to school and to get their children admitted. Cheapest school we have, we have expensive yes. school as well, and we have medium yes. fees structured school yeah. as well. That's why guardians have choices. Guardians can, can have a choice and they can get their children admitted. It's up to the parents or it's up to the guardians. Will you tell me one more, one more question about that? Uh, the structure of Masapuchari school right now? I cannot say in number formally. Obviously. In average? Yeah, on average, uh, we have three strengths in our school. Three strengths. One is our infrastructure. It's a world class infrastructure. You can visit and observe yourself. World class? Yes, world class. Another, we do not employ traditional approach to teaching. We have progressive approach, or student center approach, and we have a child friendly environment. And the most important strength is our free structure. 
any one, any Netflix can offer. Any any Netflix, even with a sound income or a meager income, can offer our school. How much old is it? The school has been running for the last 24 hours. Sorry, 24 years. 24 years. years. But we have we took over the new management for the last three years, and we have been employing uh, progressive approach for the last for the last uh, month of Baisha. So it's been a year. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Sampurna Deopati, for your important time and your deep thought about education in Nepal and about Master of School. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to express myself about Nepalese education and something about our school. And I would like to especially thank you. Thank you. And I would like to thank the camera person as well. Thank you very much. Dear ladies and gentlemen, he was Mr. Sampurna Deopati, principal of Mathapusare School. From today's program, we like to say, we have to say bye, including our technical friend. Bye for now, have a good time, thank you. <laughs>